Let's get started. Your truck is a Volvo VNL 64T 300. The VNL is the model. 64T indicates 6x4 tractor. And the 300 is a day cab designation we use for the model. Vehicle weight rating is 80,000 pounds, gross combination weight, certified for greenhouse gas. The high strength steel cab forms the backbone of Volvo safety platform. Volvo is the only OEM that uses high strength steel for the entire cab. Color is Amazon gray, or as you know it, squid ink, with prime blue accents. The frame is standard black. We have a chrome plated front grille, distinctive. Volvo uh, design. The grille is also equipped with a winter front that's stored in the cab. Uh, you can attach the winter front using these four attachment points in cold climate conditions. Keep the CNG engine at optimal operating temperature. It's equipped with LED headlamps with a signature daytime running light. The LED headlamps have a fan inside that circulates air to prevent frosting of the lenses in cold weather. Again, this light will stay illuminated here with a distinctive design for the daytime running light portion. The hood mirrors are black, breakaway design, and they're heated to match the side mirrors. Volvo has a large panoramic windshield. It's roped in, which serves two functions. The roped in design allows the windshield to be kicked out in the event of an accident to give the driver an extra exit point. And further, roped in windshields can be replaced quicker and are much less expensive than a bonded windshield. Trust clip from the next to your sun visor with clear LED marker lamps, a full roof fairing for the aerodynamic uh, package, cab air horns are under cab mounted, they're dual trumpet design. Trucks equipped with Volvo active driver assist and right hand blind spot warning. There's a front mounted radar here to detect metal metallic objects and in combination with that for functionality is the uh, windshield mounted radar that further validates uh, what the front radar finds. The right hand blind spot has a sensor mounted behind the cab to detect cars in, in the driver's blind spot and that's indicated to the driver in the A pillar with, with a, a uh, gauge. The front bumper is a painted molded aerodynamic bumper with a front drag plate that directs the air underneath the chassis uh, to reduce turbulence for better aerodynamics. The license plate holder is mounted at the factory and the license plates are installed at Fontaine modification. There's two front tow hooks located behind this panel and hidden for aerodynamic efficiency. You install the tow hooks here and the tow hooks are stored in the cab behind the driver and passenger seat. Let's just easily replace it back. Any questions from the hood? Let's uh, pop the hood. You see the ease of lifting a Volvo hood with the easy tilt feature as well. The front frame rails are steel to the dimensions indicated on the spec sheet and they're also flared in the front. That's a unique Volvo design that has a two-fold function. One, it allows the drivetrain, engine, and cooling package to sit lower in the frame to allow a steeper hood rate to improve the aerodynamic efficiency of the hood. Secondly, it allows the engine and transmission to drop down and below the cab to prevent cab intrusion in the event of a forward collision to protect the driver. The truck is powered by the Cummins natural gas ISX-12N engine at 400 horsepower and 1,450 foot-pounds of torque. The truck's equipped with a single-stage air cleaner and a restriction indicator gauge mounted on the side. The main chassis wiring harness is heavy-duty, which has a braided covering to resist abrasion and extend life. Uh, coolant is the red brand, extended life, ethylene glycol to minus 34 degrees Fahrenheit rating, and it's organic additive technology. There's a Kaiser on-off fan clutch and a Delco Remy heavy duty starter along with a Delco Remy 36 SI 165 amp pad mounted alternator. The compressor is a Wabco, it's 18.7 CFM and there's a stamp steel oil pan underneath. Any questions on 
under the engine. Moving down the passenger side, you see the down view mirror above the passenger door give you better visibility of, of cars on the driver's blind spot. Front axle is a 12,500 pound front axle with a parabolic taper leaf suspension with maintenance free bushings at both ends of the suspension. The steering gear is a TRW THP 60 power steering gear and the front brakes meet the federal stopping distance guidelines. Front brakes are 16 and a half inch by five inches in size with cast iron brake drums and a Bendix Spicer BX920 brake lining. Front axle hubs are aluminum and the front axle seals are Stemco with a visible window to be able to check the oil level. The front, front tires are a Bridgestone R268 in size 295-75R225. They're low rolling resistance for greenhouse gas regulation. And the front wheel is an Alcoa aluminum clean buff model at 22 and a half inch in size and nice tires. We also equip it with flow through inflator caps. That allows you to check the air in the tires or air up the tires without having to remove the cap from the valve stem. Underneath is an Eaton 10 speed automated manual transmission. It's the fuller advantage and it's synchronized to optimize performance with the Cummins natural gas ISX 12 n engine. Behind it is an Eaton 15 and a half inch two plate clutch. It's also equipped with hill start assist. That's gonna hold the truck. If the truck is on an incline or a decline, the driver releases their foot off the brake. It's gonna hold the truck in place for up to three seconds to give the driver enough time to depress the accelerator. There's a clutch lube line underneath for ease of maintenance. Dual rubber quarter fenders and an improvement upon this from the diesel trucks was we lowered the quarter fender position down to lessen the chance that the top of the quarter fender will interfere with the trailer. It's a Meritor RPL series drive line. That's a perma drive driveline, which means it's sealed and greased for life. And the muffler is a horizontal catalytic muffler, stainless steel tail tailpipe, and an exhaust shield as well. Any questions on this section? Move around the back of the truck. The mud flaps are the BETS B33 mud flap. They're removable. You just take this cotter pin out, lift them out of the mechanism at a 45 degree angle. Uh, the mud flaps are anti spray designed with the Volvo logo. It's equipped with an Eco EA5200 white noise backup alarm. That's an Amazon specification. It's gonna emit a multi-frequency tone versus a beep, um, which a lot of uh, backup alarms beep versus the multi-frequency tone. All the cross members through the frame rail are steel, and the rear cross member is tapered to support a tractor application. The fifth wheel is a Yoast air slide, air release fifth wheel, 47 inches in height, and 12 inch slide, the rearmost position is uh, in the center of the tandem axle. The fifth wheel angles are steel. That's the L shaped bracket that the fifth wheel plate mounts to. Uh, there will be a pintle hook on the remainder of the build uh, after the pilot. It's 4,000 pound Holland fifth, uh, pintle hook. And we have dual LED taillights with integrated backup light. There's no questions, we'll move to the side of the truck. We have a standard Meritor 40,000 pound rear axle with a 3.7 ratio. The pilot has a 3.55, the remainder of the build will have a 3.7. There's a power divider lock with a switch in the cab uh, for the rear, uh, forward rear and the rear rear axles. They're filled with synthetic rear axle lubricant. There's a 38,000 pound four bag air suspension with the standard 52 inch spacing, which is very common on a highway truck. And there's also shock absorbers in each of the rear wheel positions. Rear brakes are a 16 and a half by seven inch Bendix S-cam brake, cast iron brake drums, and lining materials with BX415. All the hubs are aluminum to match the fronts. Parking brake chambers are Haldex Life Seal with the size of 30 by 30 square inches. 
and they're all extended length stroke. There's Haldex slack adjusters in the front service brake with a 24 square inch chamber. Rear tires are the Bendix M713 Copia. The size is 295-75R225 to match the front. And they also have flow-through inflator caps. And they are classified advanced, low rolling resistance to meet greenhouse gas regulations. Climb up on the truck, see the access. Now I'm standing on two 40 inch deck plate, or excuse me, 40 inch deck plates, two pieces, 20 inches each piece. And I walked up on 16 and a half inch access steps. There's a cab air ride underneath the cab for driver comfort. There's a Wabco air dryer under here with a coalescing filter, which is heated and provides better moisture removal for the brake system. Hose connections are mounted to the back of the fuel system cover. The tra uh, trailer electric cable is removable for easier replacement should it wear out. Up top, there's the rear view camera mounted high uh, with the display in the cab. We'll talk about that in a minute. The airlines are Phillips brand. Uh, 12 foot rubber hoses. They're straight with a spiral wrap for easier management and they're held by two uh, spring holders again for hose management. Go ahead and step down. We have steel air tanks with manual pull chains on each air tank. The battery box is here under the driver's door. It's got the standard cover on it. Easily removable. Very light. It's four, bat four battery system. There's 760 cold cranking amps each for a total of 3,040 cold cranking amps. Underneath the cab is the battery cutoff switch. That's going to cut power to the system to limit or minimize parasitic draw and save your batteries. Engine block heater input is here. Uh, it's a 12 volt, 1500 watt engine block heater. So you can see the battery box is secure even though it's not strapped. There's two rubber straps to put it back on. This is an Agility 175 diesel gallon equivalent back of cab fuel system. Your ports for fast and slow fill. Access to the fuel system here. Trucks equipped with cab side fairings as part of the aerodynamics package. Stainless steel cab mounted fuel plate, fuel permit plates, with the IPTA stickers mounted at Fontaine. As I mentioned earlier, black aerodynamic mirrors. They're power on both axes and heated as well on both sides of the truck. Dual antennas that are 48 inches in length for the CB and the radio uh, for antennas. So open the door. Got a five pound fire extinguisher, outboard mounted, which is accessible from the inside of the cab or the outside of the cab, should there be a fire on the outside. And a triangle reflector kit behind the driver's seat. Climb up here. Make sure I put both hands on Volvo's grab handles that are inside the cab to uh, keep them out of wet or icy conditions for better grip for the driver. As I sit in the cab, you notice that there's an airbag behind here. Volvo is the only North American manufacturer with a driver's side airbag as standard. The steering wheel has a tilt and telescoping function. And the steering wheel also is energy absorbing in the event of a front end collision. The dash also has energy absorbing panels 
to protect the driver in the front in, in the event of a collision as well. Turn on gauges here. We do its test sweep. It's a nine gauge instrument cluster with a color driver information display in the center. We've added a rear suspension gauge for this year. We've moved it into the favorite section, which the driver can customize to his or her liking. Um, but also it can be accessed from the steering wheel controls, which also walk, walk you through the driver information display menu items. And we'll show you that in a second. It's a dual trip meter, and there's a pre-trip assistant function. So let me walk you into that. It's three items down. It's got several functions. There's an exterior light inspection test, and I'll show you that in a second. A switch test checklist. It pulls up all the switches that are active in the truck. And as you activate those switches, it will indicate that those switches are functioning. And there's an air brake leak down test that's part of the driver pre-trip. So when I click the exterior light function, it's now going to cycle all the lights around the truck so the driver can get out of the truck and see the lights cycling and not have to uh, have someone hold the brake or turn signals or things of that nature. The truck's equipped with a non-canceling turn signal switch. The VATA volume control, the Volvo Active Driver Assist volume control, is driver adjustable, and that's, a, that's accessed through the driver information display. The default volume level is medium, and the, vol, the VATA time gap, Volvo Active Driver Assist time gap, is set at level three, which effectively is a 2.8 second following distance uh, for adaptive crews. That's the same uh, setting as on the diesel trucks. Interior is a fleet level interior. It's vinyl for ease of cleaning and maintenance. Um, the floor inserts are rubber that can be easily replaced should they wear out. The interior, both seats are air suspended. They're X2 cloth interior trim level. Um, there's an adjustable lumbar on both seats and the driver's side has dual uh, armrests. In the cab there's six power ports, three 12 volt and three USB. 12 volt uh, power access above, 12 volt and dual USB in the dash. USB in the radio and a 12 volt below the dash. The driver and passenger seat belts are standard length orange per Amazon specification. Air conditioner and heater controls here. AM, FM, CD, MP3, USB, Bluetooth radio here with controls in the steering wheel for volume and in the, in the Bluetooth phone. Controls for the Eaton Ultra Shift are dash mounted, and there's speakers, four total, in the dashboard and door. There's a dash mounted CB hold down, and a marker interrupter switch for the lights on the steering wheel. There's dual power locks in each door. That's an ad from last year's diesel trucks with key fob remotes to unlock from outside the truck. In consistency with the diesel spec, there's a unique key for each truck and the position is accessible from the ground for ease of maintenance. And you get four keys per unit. This truck's equipped with a safety feature uh, of a parking brake alarm. So it's gonna sound an alarm if the driver takes off the parking brake. And let's just let the foot off the service brake. With the door open, it's gonna sound this alarm. There's a slight delay to that alarm, but it'll remind the driver to either put their foot on the brake or set the parking brake. There's netted overhead storage for both the driver and passenger side, carbon monoxide detector, and a methane detector, which will detect if any fuel happens to get into the cab. There's a blue IQ monitor to monitor the functions of the agility fuel system. Some of the upfit components in the truck, this is the monitor for the backup camera. It will activate once the truck's put in reverse. There's a smart drive event recorder with a forward facing camera and a driver facing camera. Uh, the RAM mount with USB cable mounted at Fontaine for your device. And underneath is the Zergo telecommunications device. So let's jump out, we'll look at the lights as they cycle. Three points of exit, three points of contact for exit. Two 
front lights of the truck, a flashing turn signal, daytime running light, headlamps. That's happening all around the truck and in the rear as well. The engine shutdown timer is enabled and it's at five minutes to match the diesel spec. The road speed limit set at 65 miles an hour with the pedal set at 63 and the cruise set at 65. That gives a two mile an hour gap to entice the driver to use cruise control to get an additional two miles an hour road speed. Minimum cruise is set at 30 miles an hour. It's equipped with eco road speed limit control and the engine protection system is set to shut down to protect the engine. Thank you and appreciate your time.